Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Mantua Tyco 060 Atchison Topeka Santa Fe steam locomotive. This was donated to the channel several months ago from North Florida Rail Productions, and as you can see, the engine's in really bad condition. It's clearly seen a lot of use over the years and bared the brunt of quite a few falls, probably. And uh, I also think somebody's tried to work on this engine before because there are all sorts of wires coming from places that they really shouldn't be, so that's not great stuff to see. And when we tested this thing, it, the whole drive was completely seized, so this thing definitely has not run in quite some time. So we'll see if we can get this thing riding the rails once again. I'm not sure how much of a challenge it's going to be, but we'll give it a shot. And if we're lucky, we might just be able to see it flying around the layout once again. The locomotive is not the only part of this project which needs work though. I was looking over the tender and as you can see there's a lot of stuff which is messed up on here. Uh, the whole thing is really damaged, but in any case, we'll try to get it going again. I'll take this thing over to the track, I'll show you all what it's currently doing, and then we'll go from there. So here's currently what the situation is. I'll set the engine up on the track, and I know I showed it having a tender, but that thing's basically just a short circuit on wheels right now. So for the demonstration, I'm just going to use this wire right here, which would go to the tender and connect it to this rail. And what you'll see is, you know, the engine does actually run to some extent, but it really is running because I'm giving it 18 volts of power right now, and it's hardly moving. You know, this thing should be flying around, and if we, you know, continue to try to run it like this, um, it would burn out the motor. Like, the thing barely runs, so it's not in good shape, and if you just look at the wheels, it's really not so great. So we'll take it back over to the workbench and see if we can figure out why it's running so junky and then, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get it running well if we're lucky. So to start off, we're just going to remove this screw right here. I believe this is what holds the entire locomotive together and uh, it actually seems to be pretty loose, which makes me think again, somebody's probably inside this engine at some point trying to fix things. This seems to be where those wires were coming from. They head up to the light, so if we're lucky, that light might actually be working. But as for the drive itself, um, this actually doesn't look horrible. And it actually doesn't seem to be turning over too poorly, so I think in this case, it's less of the motor being gummed up or the drive being gummed up and more of all the contacts being oxidized or really dirty, which, I mean, is really not surprising, so... Yeah, we'll uh, try to just clean all this up a little bit. We'll try to rewire all of this and obviously fix up the tender. And I think we're already off to a pretty good start. I don't know. Let's begin. I guess the first thing we'll tackle is opening this part up. This is where uh, all the bearings for the wheels are. And it's how the engine picks up power. And uh, these this area gets dirty quite often. So we'll just uh, open it up and have a look inside. Uh, these are all the bearings right here, uh, as well as the these brass parts right here are the bearing sleeves so if we just uh, pull that out there is a little bit of crud in there so that's not so good but this is actually not that bad in comparison to some of what i've seen uh, be mindful when you're working on these things though that uh, once you remove that screw this part is loose and uh, you don't want to do one of two things which is if this part comes out uh, the drivers will pop out of here and that is a pain in the neck to put back together and uh, you have to be careful not to do the same thing with the wheels, so just keep that in mind if you're doing this bit yourself. Anyways, I'm going to grab some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. We'll clean all the bearings out. We'll put some fresh oil in there, and then that should pretty much complete this part. All right, let's see just how bad these are. Hey, yeah, you know something? These bearings are actually not that bad. Like, there's just a little bit of residue from some oil, but overall, like, this is far from the worst I've seen. I, I think the issue is actually just mostly with the wheels, funny enough. And uh, I'm also going to want to clean out that gear a little bit, but we'll wait till later for that. So anyways, now that we've uh, got this part uh, all cleaned up, we'll just do a little bit of cleaning on the uh, axles here, and we'll throw some oil in there qu uh, quickly. You want to use a conductive lubricant because it will obviously lubricate this, but also it will improve the connectivity. So it will make your engine last longer and run better, which is terrific. Uh, I guess one more thing we should probably check is to make sure this plate is not too dirty. And it seems pretty spotless, just like the other parts. So that's really good to see. Sometimes you open these things up and they're quite nasty. 
Uh, I just noticed something. I don't think all the screws are the same size. We've got a long one. I wonder why. Okay, I believe this is how it went. For some reason, this part on the end is a, a little bit thicker, so I guess that's why the screw is slightly longer. It's a little bit odd, but whatever. Anyways, I guess we'll try to clean out this gear now, and then, uh, yeah, we'll start to sort out the wheels and everything else. If this was uh, thick old grease, you'd want to use something a little bit better than uh, what I've got going on right here, but eh, I just took kind of a coarse brush and dipped it in some rubbing alcohol, and you can see it's getting all that crud from out of the gears, which is really all we want, and then uh, we'll, you know, obviously rinse this out and just keep doing this until they're nice and clean. And uh, yeah, the alcohol will evaporate, so we don't have to really worry about that. All right, well, I finished cleaning up that gear and I'm quite impressed with how it turned out. It almost looks brand new, so I think everything on this locomotive is actually in better shape than meets the eye, at least mechanically. So anyways, the next part we're gonna tackle is uh, the motor, just the bearings and the commutator. Not really anything too complicated. These motors are very easy to service. Uh, the commutator uh, looks okay so far from, from what meets the eye the gaps actually look all right but um, there very well could be some oxidization so we're going to hit it up with the fiberglass pencil it's quite a good tool for uh, scraping off old oxidization i mean just look at how well that's already polishing up Oh, I just finished cleaning that up and I think it turned out pretty well, so I'll just uh, clean up the brush. It doesn't really even need it, but I'll pop that back in there and I'll throw some oil on the bearings and I think that uh, the motor is pretty much done, or at least as far as we can probably work on it. There's one, we'll just quickly uh, get the other brush as well. And now I'll just get a little bit of uh, oil down here onto the bearings. And now that those have oil, just uh, let's turn it over a little bit. Test it out with uh, a power pack. I've already got mine right here, so I'll just uh, get some power and see if it'll start. <laughs> there we go, it's starting to pull through. Doesn't sound fantastic, but keep in mind the rest of the drive hasn't been serviced yet, so this is not too bad a start. So I think at this point we'll start servicing some of these other parts. I just noticed that this right here is out of place, which is no good. I might have accidentally bumped that. So that part of the drive looks okay. I guess we'll just uh, oil it all up. So I'll put some here. Any part that moves, you want to throw a little bit of oil on. And it would be nice to see if the uh, light on the cab actually works. If the light works, I'll wire it up. Ah, son of a gun, it works. So, I'll get that wired back in. So I think uh, I want to rewire everything to the uh, two brushes, which I assume is how it was originally wired. I'm not 100% sure. There's not really an obvious sign, but uh, we'll try it out and see how it goes here. So here's something which could be causing problems. These wires are really long and I don't know if one of them originally connected to the tender or what the case is, but anyway, uh, they're so long that since I want to connect them here, I'm a bit concerned they're gonna get tangled up. So I wanna make them long enough to reach, but not so long where they're gonna get caught up in the motor and cause all sorts of issues with the drive. So I think we'll cut them down to about that length right there. And it should be all right. Try to use actual uh, wire strippers this time, but I don't know, they might be a little too small even just for the smallest. Let's have a look here. <laughs> Not quite. Oh well, let's see if we can get them with this. Well, success with one. There we go. So I think the way I want to wire this is uh, we kind of direct the wire so it goes up 
and then down towards the uh, tender. So sort of like that, just to make sure it doesn't get caught up in there. That's really just the only thing I want to avoid. I think at this point we're pretty much ready to put the shell back on. I'm just going to throw uh, an adequate amount of grease right on the uh, worm gear there, yeah, as well as some oil. And then I think with that we can pretty much uh, seal this whole thing up. Okay, well I got that all back together. I guess we'll try to test the engine out now. Hopefully it will start. Let's see if we got sparks. Oh, that's promising. Let's see here. Doesn't seem half bad. We've even got a working headlight. So now the main focus is going to be, uh, you know, now that the engine's running, to actually use that to clean up the wheels. I can, I can, I can smell something burning. And all my years of working on model trains. That's the first time I've ever seen a smoking headlight. That was really weird. Yeah, those wheels aren't looking too bad. Now, I'm gonna fixing this. So I mentioned in the beginning that this didn't look good and uh, there's a lot of things wrong with it. We got a coupling box, which is really messed up. Uh, the wheels are, you know, this is all just shorted out. But uh, furthermore, look at this. Somebody dropped this thing really badly and actually bent the axle. So I think we're gonna have to remove all of the trucks. Try to kind of just rebuild this whole thing, really. Okay, well, the, the rest of that seems all right. It's just this, which is my main concern. Like that is clearly bent out of shape. I think that that is improved, but it's uh, it's certainly not perfect, that's for sure. Uh, but moreover, I'm uh, a little bit more interested in getting this wheel set out and uh, fixing that up, because that is definitely going to be a big problem if we don't, so just trying to kind of pull it out, I guess. Well, finally got that out. I guess we'll see if we can bend it back into place. It's, it's bent like multiple directions too. You can see we got one bend like that, but I don't know, there's also a bit of a bend towards the end. It's, it's hard to explain, but anyways, let's see if we can bend this thing back into place. Mm. That's better. We're still not straight in the middle there though. Well, you know, it's certainly not perfect, but I think it's good enough to at least work. So we'll try to get that back in place and we'll put it in on the same side as it should be, you know, like th this clearly came apart at some point. So let's pop that back in place. Like so. Mm, it seems okay. Well, I think those wheels are about as clean as we're going to get them, so I guess we'll start reassembling this whole thing. I don't know, maybe just before that I'll throw a new coupler in here because this one's completely junked. So found a uh, metal Katie coupler, which I think is going to be a fit, and it looks like it already has its own kind of spring assembly, so I don't think we even need to put anything in there. Yeah, it's perfect.
Now, I'm pretty sure it's this set of wheels which picks up power, so that would mean I think we need to power this side. So we'll get them like that. Actually, just before I connect that up, I think I want to uh, connect this wire up to that screw right there. And I think with that, we basically have our, uh, our locomotive all together. All right, folks, let's see if our efforts have paid off. Hopefully I did all the uh, wiring right. And absolutely nothing. Oh, oh, there we go. We've got a runner. Let's see, let's see go forwards. So uh, it seems like the light's no longer working, unfortunately. I think that's probably why uh, there was smoke coming out of it. I guess that's done for, but the engine, it's going. And it's, it's running pretty well, too. And you know something, the light actually is working. It's just really dim. Hmm. Well, we'll let that run around for a while and just break in, I guess. Well, I ran the thing for about five minutes, and I've got to say, it's just been going like a top. Like, it's flawless. I'm so impressed with this locomotive. I also uh, stopped it at one point, and uh, I touched up the paintwork. When it comes back around, I'll give you all a closer look at how that turned out. It's uh, not very realistic, but I just wanted to have some fun painting this locomotive up. I mean, ultimately what it needs is a new paint job, but uh, I'll show you what I did. So I just uh, touched up the bits of missing paint with uh, a black metallic pen. Uh, but then I took a white metallic pen and I just uh, kind of painted the running board here and gave it white walls. Check those out. I uh, painted this too, but I don't think it turned out that well. So this is now a working locomotive, which in my opinion looks half decent. I'm very happy with it. But now, why don't we see if it can pull some cars? So we've got an eight car consist hooked up here. Let's see if it's strong enough. Yeah, no problems. It takes off very smooth as you can see too. It's just a beautiful runner. It's very rare you find a locomotive from this era, which still has so much uh, gusto. Like the efficiency of the motor is good. Like everything's in check. I just want to really show how smooth this thing takes off. So I'll go over to my controller here and I'm going to set the momentum. And what this does is it gradually increases the power. So you'll see the voltage will slowly climb and just watch how smooth this thing goes. Like for an engine of its age, that is very good. Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for today's video. I can't tell you all how happy I am with just how well this turned out. I mean, you know, I, I thought it had a pretty good chance of running again, but the fact that it's running well and the current draws in check and the motor is healthy, everything seems to be in shape is just incredible. So, yeah, very, very happy with that. Uh, anyways, before I finish off the video, I just want to give another thanks to North Florida Rail Productions for sending this locomotive. It was very generous of them, and I'm uh, happy to see we could get it going again. But with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.